This is David Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, the playbook. I'm here at the greatest stadium ever built, SoFi Stadium. $5.5 billion is now being reconstructed for the World Cup. Just shows you what money can buy. Speaking of what money can buy, I have an incredible guest, Lisa Caprera. Welcome to the playbook. Thank you for having me. It's beautiful, this stadium. Yes, it is, and I'm blessed to be here. But speaking of blessed to be here, you and I share the same perspective in life, and it's we're blessed to be here. Uh, <laughs> gratitude's a cornerstone. It's the spine of everything that we do. And I wish I had that perspective when I was your age. And so I was wondering where that gracious perspective, that powerful perspective, that gratitude is everything came about for you. Yeah, so basically I've just always been a go-getter and I've had that fight mentality, that mindset ever since I was a little kid. <laughs> and where'd that come from? Siblings or? Mostly my father yeah. and my mother, my whole family. You know, I come from a large Italian family. That's good. <laughs> There's a lot of guilt driving you as well. Yeah. And you're an athlete as well. And yeah. you carried that same type of competitive graces experience in your own sports career. Um, and on the soccer field, did you find that gratitude was a benefit or was it actually a detriment because a lot of people think that you're soft when you're grateful uh, but yet i believe in the ferocious buddhas of the world that the gracious <laughs> people are seeking their best they have a desire that they must be what they can be how did that interplay in sports you know you gotta know what you want and you're there for a reason right you know every day is not guaranteed you have to take advantage of every moment given to you because it could be your last so yeah. oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> I, have a, I have a saying that uh, we're guaranteed 24 hours a day, every day of our life, except for the last day of our lives, we'll, we'll be cheated out of that. Um, with that kind of daily, get the most out of life, carpe diem attitude, um, when you face some challenges in your life and you absolutely have had some challenges, um, I know you had a near death experience, uh, which can change our life. How did that never say die, wanting the best out of life, take one day at a time attitude help you with that experience? Yeah, so when I was younger, um, April 20th, 2006, I got hit by a car and it really changed my life. Um, in that moment, you know, when I blacked out, I felt like everything was taken from me. And that's when I realized what really matters in life. You know, I wanted to see my family the moment I got hit by a car. I got hit by a black Mustang going 45 miles per hour. And I was lucky to be alive. It was a miracle. I really um, thought I was gonna die. And before that accident, what did you think was important? What flavor ice cream I was eating that <laughs> night? <laughs> how, old, how old were you? I was about nine, you know, around there. <laughs> wow, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and understanding for the rest of your life, having that perspective that in an instant and a second that your life can change, were there other moments where it gave you a different perspective on this isn't so bad in a framework of what's going on today? Yeah, you know, um, while running fitness, right? A lot of people complain about fitness tests and how they don't want to do 300s and they roll their eyes and they're tired. <laughs> <laughs> but then I always think back to um, actually one of my friends, Eric Legrand. He played football for Rutgers and he's paralyzed. And he's a really amazing story. And I think back to him and how he wishes every day that he could walk. And then I think back to all these people complaining about fitness when they're lucky, you know, you, you could walk. There's some people out there that can't. So, you know, you gotta think of those people that go through those hard moments that wish they had what you have. It's so true that we have to have the framework. And once again, with gratitude, um, but there's more when we're just grateful than being grateful and creating a framework where we're finding the light, the love and the lessons in what we're doing. Um, but there's another thing at such a young age to have the perspective of giving back. And you truly see life not happening to you as a victim. I see you not even believing that it's for just you, but it's really through you for others. And you seem to be very inspired to achieve as much as you can so you can help others what are some of the things that you're doing to give back today? So I'm a motivational mindset coach. Um, I also coach at IMG Academy. 
And I deal with athletes all day from everywhere around the world. It's really important to give back and to instill in young athletes, especially to have a strong mindset because the world we live in, you know, you're, especially when you're playing a sport, you deal with a lot of hurdles and a lot of hard times and you're going to cry and you're going to laugh and you're going to have good moments and bad days, but you got to realize at the end, it's all worth it. And I'm 56 years old and been through different generations of people and their mindset and uh, understand the combination of mindset, heart set and hand set. Uh, but I'm always trying to figure out what's changed with the athletes today compared to when I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. You know, coaches could actually yell at you or even hit you or mm -hmm. shake your head or do really dumb things that probably aren't the best things to do. But I'm wondering if you see, cause you work with the greatest athletes in the world, especially at IMG. Um, <laughs> How do you see discipline today versus maybe looking at our generation, uh, even though things are a little bit unorthodox in the past, do you think that there's the same discipline in the athlete today that there was when things were a little different when I grew up? Yeah, it's very different. Um, I was having a conversation with my father when he played football and he said that one of his coaches didn't let them have a water break. Yeah, and they would play very the, common. <laughs> they would play the whole practice without drinking water. Today, it's like a whole big deal. You know, you got to have a couple water breaks and it's just stricter. It's different. Also, too, I spoke to an athlete who had a blister on her foot and she sat out the whole practice because of a blister, which is ridiculous because yeah. you should be so engaged in your sport that you're not even thinking about the blister. You're thinking about making the next play and making every run count and make sure you're doing your job in the field. It all depends on your focus level. What are you most focused on? All, a lot of it has to do with fear too. Some people will sit out because they fear of getting injured or they fear this and that when you gotta be a little tougher, you know? Well, having a near-death experience changes your perspective and your litmus test of fear. Uh, what are you most afraid of now? Since You've almost died. Afraid of not taking advantage of every opportunity. You know, my goal in life is to look back and maybe tell my daughter, my son one day, like, hey, look, look what your mother did. Look what your mother's accomplished. You know, I want to work hard and I, not only for like my kids one day, but for everybody, you know, the younger generation to just know it's so important to believe in yourself and to do as much as possible because that's how you find yourself and that's how you learn and know what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. And it's interesting when you say what you'd like and what you don't like, because I teach a lot in sales and a lot of people don't understand yeah. value. And the only way that we can share value, believe it or not, is to do two things. One, give people what they like or take away what they don't like. Those are truly the only quantitative value uh, that we can provide to others. What do you think most athletes today like about being an athlete the most? I think it's those moments of adrenaline rush. So when you score a goal or when you run, you make a huge touchdown, you make a huge tackle, um, hit a huge shot in golf, whatever it is. That's, <laughs> that's very IMG you know, of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever your sport is, you know, yeah. that successful moment, you don't find that anywhere else. You know, you live for those moments. And then when you are stopped playing your sport, it's very hard. A lot of athletes struggle to find that exact feeling. That's why some of us go crazy after when, you know, retirement and stuff, because you have to do so many different things to almost capture that exact feeling. Yeah. In fact, coming from some of the near death experience, a lot of my athletes as they have transitioned, I call it expand, but mm -hmm. transition from professional athletics into the business world. They always yeah. say that it's unfortunate, but when you're a professional athlete, you have to experience two deaths. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it is absolutely just like dying when you're done playing because of that lack. What do you think athletes today like least about being a professional athlete? Um, maybe like the fact that you have to filter some things and you have to watch what you say. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> because you might offend somebody, but or everybody, or everybody, <laughs> <laughs> by anything that you say. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. But you gotta always, you know, think of the good part too. You gotta look back to when you were a little kid and how you fell in love with the game. Sometimes people lose that; they forget why they're there. It's not just because of politics or somebody wants you to be there, or it's not even about the money. It's because you genuinely love the game. You love to play. You love to score. You love to do that header. You love to make <laughs> that tackle. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you're really is. good at it as well. <laughs> now, a lot of professional athletes uh, don't like to watch sports or they don't like to watch their sport. They're not a fan <laughs> at all. Are you a fan of soccer or are you a fan of all sports? What are your favorite sports? And if you are a fan? Yeah, I definitely am a fan of all sports. I've covered many. Yeah. <laughs> I um I work for the Yes Network too, so I cover the New York Yankees, Brooklyn Nets. I've done NYCFC soccer, um, the Liberty. I've also worked for Valley Sports, covering the Lightning, the Rays, Orlando Magic, popping the Fort Lauderdale studio. You know, all the Marlins, Miami Heat. <laughs> you know, all those teams over there. Yeah, but, you're like Linda Cohn. She loves all sports. <laughs> Except football, for hockey. definitely <laughs> hockey. Love. I love yeah. every sport. That's so good. Me too. That's what I. <laughs> My business partner, Warren Moon, that was my favorite thing about being his business partner is not only was he a Hall of Fame quarterback and the first black quarterback in the Hall of Fame, but he was like you. He was a fan of, he. I thought he was joking the first time. My son was like four or five. He said, hey, can I come to Miles Flag football game? And I thought he was like just being a good friend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, he's doing the full analyst thing, right? <laughs> I'm like looking at him going, this is a five-year-old flag football game. Calm down. <laughs> Uh, but we've been to World Series. And then all the great athletes, you'll like this as well, coming from where you're at. Like, I would sit at the Dodger World Series with him. Yeah. And he'd look over. He goes, you know, football wasn't even my best sport. Baseball was my best sport. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> like, all these professional athletes, they think they're going to lie to yeah. me that somehow they were better. Especially the Hall of Famers, right? Like, oh, yeah, I'm a better. It's like Romo saying I was a better golfer than quarterback. No, you weren't. Or you'd be on the PGA Tour. Uh, I don't buy that at all. Um, now, announcing right you yeah. co covering sports is different as well and i've been blessed to do that and uh it takes a lot of off-air work and a lot of people <laughs> don't realize how much preparation is involved that they think that just because you're a professional athlete uh or yeah. a front office executive that you could talk about a sport and be engaging and entertaining and be able to carry uh the conversation which is really difficult what type of preparation do you have when you're on air so I just think back to all the stuff I've done to get there, to get to where I'm at. And I tell myself, there's a reason for why you're here and you're great at what you do. You know, there's, everybody has a story, right? And a ch or a chip on your shoulder and a drive to keep you going and motivated. And I just think back to, you know, someone who's worked hard for me, like my father. Yeah. You know, I like to make people proud and I'm a very confident person. So, you know, speaking on air in the stadium for the New York Yankees, that was amazing experience. And I've faced a challenge, actually, when they changed the reads on me one night. Yeah. So I only had a couple hours to memorize like a whole paragraph. And I said, this is it. Like, let's go. It's going to get done. We're going to do it. I have no other option. I have no other option. You right. know, you're on air. You got the camera on you. There's no other option. <laughs> That is true about the camera for sure. Now, social media, you're building a brand as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's never been more opportunity for individuals to build their own brand. And obviously there's a great amplification through social media on all the different platforms. How much of your time now is spent actually on your own brand beyond all the other activities that you have going on and understanding creating content yourself, not just for or with other people? You know, I've done a lot in my life to build my resume and I've experienced every side of production, content, digital media, graphics, everything. I wanted to learn it all because I know I'm going to use it one day. You have to learn every position, every role to um, create a puzzle. You know, you got to put the pieces together and it's like a bow and arrow. You know, you pull it back, you pull it back and then you launch it into something amazing. Right. So whenever anybody has a bad day, tell yourself, you know, hey, keep going, keep going because you're eventually going to get to the top. That's yeah. amazing. You'd be a great entrepreneur because all the great entrepreneurs take out the trash and run the company <laughs> and they have to know every single yeah. uh, part. In fact, Undercover Boss, the TV show is based off of the great CEOs and entrepreneurs that, you know, I remember the Southwest CEO that used to work the baggage claim and people were like looking around and he's loading bags onto the plane. Uh, Steve Wynn is another entrepreneur that used to hang out with the valets. And he used to tell me, yeah, he goes, you learn more about running a business by hearing from the valets what people really think. He goes, I don't need to send surveys to people because I can just go down and talk to a valet and they're going to tell me the comments about the bathrooms and the food and yeah. you're going to get real surveys because the valets are listening to the inner circle and in, in the inner experience. 
you have so much talent. You have so many options and opportunities. I'm looking through your bio and your resume going, wow, she can do so much. How do you prioritize all the different options, opportunities, touches of favor that you have in your life today? You're so young. Uh, a lot of people that get into your position, Darren and I, uh, your friend and mine, uh, we got overwhelmed with all the blessings and really didn't work on prioritizing uh, the right values and the right decisions. What are you doing today to prioritize all the different things that you have? I mean, you're only, what, 26 years old? Yeah. <laughs> and that's scary. 26. I, I write everything down. I make notes. Old school write down or yeah. like new school to text yourself old or school. something. Okay, good. <laughs> and and I'm I text old, right? Too. I'm like thirty I'm thirty years older than you, so <laughs> you gotta write things down and you gotta know what's important and what's not. What's a waste of your time and what's not. That's um, so good. I, I, as a mindset coach, I like talking to people and I know when you have fight in you. You know, so I know if you have an amazing goal, if you have a goal you wanna achieve, I like to help people get through it. You know, if I know if you're committed or not. If you're not committed, then I can't make you do it. I can't make you want to be successful. You know, I tell a lot of my athletes, I talk to a lot of athletes all the time. Um, you're the author of your own story or you're the artist of your own story and you can't hand anyone the paintbrush, right? That's awesome. Sometimes life gets crazy where you can't control certain things, but you can control your reaction and how you handle it moving forward. There's things that are going to be taken from you and there's things that are going to be given to you, but what are you going to do with it? And it's not anyone's decision, but your own. People can talk to you. You can get advice from others and collect their thoughts and then you make your own decision at the end of the day. But your life is your story. You're the author of your own story. And I tell them that and they take it how they want. I love that. We have Shakespeare with <laughs> her own story. And I just got to show you something real quick. I'm so old school. Uh, there's old school right there. Oh, would you look <laughs> at that? That's <laughs> how it's done. notes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> who needs a cell phone an ipad <laughs> any type of thing that's awesome well i've learned one thing from doing thousands of interviews with the billionaires millionaires entrepreneurs celebrities athletes and entertainers like the incredible darren prince that there's one common denominator between successful people and others uh the empty milers and it's a desire that they must be what they can be and from the minute i met you with that extraordinarily adorable accent of yours from Jersey, <laughs> uh, you have a desire that you must be what you can be. And it is shared and spread to everybody that you touch. So don't lose that. <laughs> and you will uh, have a great impact on this earth. Lisa Caprera. She is amazing motivational speaker. We got the drop the nugget at the very end, an extraordinary athlete analyst and she is now my new best friend sorry darren prince i stole her from you <laughs> come back and visit me on my other shows thank you for everything you do thank you so much for having me you're incredible <laughs> this is david Meltzer with just another amazing human being here at sofi stadium with entrepreneurs the playbook mm -hmm.